So at a certain point, Tony Shabani came to me. We had lunch together, and he's like, Tear, um, they want to make you this character. Are you interested or not? And I was like, dude, talk to me. And um, I had nothing to do with the character at all except for the name. I came up with the name Alexandra York. Like, that was the only claim I have to that character. Um, but it was kind of like the thing with Brian that all happened kind of simultaneously. And if I'm wrong, because I have a horrible memory, someone please correct me. But, um, yeah, so Brian and I dated. and. Um, yeah, if you want to know more about Brian and I, talk to me or let me yeah, shut is up. There, is there anything about Brian that that would surprise us to know a side of him that, that you saw? I know you knew him for more than just the time you date him. You were around him many, many years. Yeah. Um, he was, I shouldn't say one of, he was the most intense person I ever knew in the business. He was so intense. Um and I don't know how graphic you want me to be. I, I don't mind being graphic. Like I sure be I've graphic. Sort of, I'm sorry. You can be graphic. Okay, so I've spoken honestly about this because I, you know to this day I love and care for him, um, and I love and care for his children. Um, but so he and I were dating, and. Um, he came to me one day and said um, that his ex-girlfriend is pregnant. And I said, you know, dude, because we had just started dating, like maybe a couple of months, no, no big deal. And um, I said, dude, like, it, that's okay. Just you go do what you need to do. Be a dad, be a husband, whatever. Like, we'll always be friends. Like, that's cool. And I thought everything was cool. And, um, like, he started getting very, very, um, like, he would watch me and anything. I Like, if I, if I talked to someone for too long, he was like, he would say things to me. But the worst thing that happened was, I don't remember where it was in Alabama. I, I think it might have been Montgomery. I don't know. It was in Alabama, though. I do remember that. And this was during the era of, oh, God, I need, I almost need to go back, uh, Devin, because unless you know about this drug, you, th this will make no sense. But um, do you remember gamma hydroxybutyrate? Yeah, it was very popular for what a decade or so among yeah. wrestlers. Yeah, but but but, but the, the you know, interesting thing was it was available. Like I bought mine at Lex and Sing's gym. Right, it was a health. Food, it was considered health. Yeah, like it came out, and the 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 big thing that everyone talked about was it'll help you lose body fat and it will help you sleep. Well, shit, I had to be at CNN at four in the morning. I could never get to sleep early enough to get enough sleep to wake up and feel rested. So I was like, lose body fat, be, sleep, hell yeah, that, that's, I'm all about it, right? Yeah. And so, um, but the, the interesting thing was you could buy it right there at St. Alexis Gym. And that's what I did. It was not like black market or, you know, like, no, it was legal and you, you bought it at the gym and it was great. Right. Anyway, so um, fast forward again and we're in Alabama and um, Tom Zink, rest in peace, um, was in my room sitting in a chair. Um, it was a room where there's a bed and like a living room set up and he was sitting in a chair and um, all of a sudden this bam, bam, bam on the door happens and it's Brian screaming. And, um, you know, he's like, I don't want to say everything he said because I love his children and I just, yeah, we won't say all the things he said. Anyway, he ended up knocking down the hotel room door 
accusing Tom Zink, which was his best friend at the time, of screwing me. Meanwhile, Tom's sitting in a chair. I'm over here on a bed sitting there. We're like nowhere near each other. And um, yeah, it was it was brutal. It was nasty. It was ugly. And then he started leaving messages on my voicemail, which back in the day, like now there's no little tiny recorders that fit into a little audio thing. I don't know how old you are, Devin, but um, like back in the day, you know, we yeah, had. I remember those. Right. And he started leaving me these nasty messages. Um, it got so bad because I couldn't sleep again. And if I did sleep, then I was wakened by like him leaving a message. And so finally it was like WCW had to intervene at a certain point. But um, anyway, um, but fast forward, like I, I still love him. I respect him. I hate that he's gone. I love his kids. And um I just think that, it, and this is one thing he said to me. He said, I thought you were going to wait for me. I'm like, dude, like I told you, like you, you had a baby coming. You had an ex-girlfriend that you were having a baby with. Like, we'll be friends. What part of I'm going to wait for you had anything to do with that? And so, yeah, it was kind of um, disconcerting, but um yeah, finally he got over it. When when he finally came to uh, to WWF, um, we had you know, and we did the whole like he kidnapped me and he had me for thirty days and all that stuff. We had so much fun filming those those vignettes, <laughs> like they were crazy and silly, and we laughed and we had a good time. And I'm I'm happy that those were our last memories together. So. Were you surprised that he passed, or could you see kind of the downward spiral happening? I knew back in WCW that he was not well, right? And then when he came up to WWF um, and I was working with him, you know, I, I knew shit was not all straight, but I remember the night before he passed. Um, in my contract, because of Dakota, I did not do house shows. I only did pay-per-views and TVs so that I was home with her, you know, for the majority of time. And there were a few occasions where the company would ask me, will you come on the road and will you, you know, do these house shows? And I would acquiesce and say yes. And, you know, I... I I was a team player, right? And so the night before he passed, I remember um, because again he was he owned me, and I was dressed in all the black and the nose ring and the whatever, right? And he was so rough with me that night. Um, like he scratched my neck, and and he was just really rough with me. And and I said to him after we got backstage, I said, "Are you okay?" And he said, he was like totally pissed off. He's like, yeah, nobody will let me ride with them. So I went to Dustin and I said, you know, can we let him ride with us? You know, because nobody will let him. And Dustin said, no, he'll find somebody. Somebody will let him ride with them. Yeah, it's okay. So I, you know, pissed it off and like, okay, somebody will let him ride with them, right? And the next day was our pay-per-view where um, Dustin and I were supposed to, uh, um, what was it called when you do your vows again? Not reunite, but help me. Uh, I don't remember, but yeah. When when you come together after you've been married and you, not reunite. Is it reunite your vows? No. No. Uh, I have never done it, so I don't know, but... Uh... I know what you're talking about. People do it all the time. Any hoodle doodles. So um, we're supposed to do that whole scene on the pay-per-view October 5th. And um, it's my birthday that day. So I was a little bit preoccupied because of my birthday too, right? So it's pay-per-view, my birthday. It's a big show, big pay-per-view. What we're going to do with Brian. I'm going to turn 
and go heal with Brian and Dustin's going to turn baby face. Right. And um, it's like one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. Brian's not there. And we had to be at the building. Um, if you were doing uh, an Eastern Standard Time pay-per-view or show, you had to be there at 1 p.m. If you backed up the hours, you know, backward, you had to be at there at 2, whatever, right? Or um, I'm sorry, not 2, um, 12, uh, 11, 10, whatever, yeah. right? Anyway, um, I'm like, Brian's not here, Dust. And he's like, oh, he'll be here. He'll be here soon. And so I remember I finally went, I think it was, I think it was Earl Hebner. I told, I'm like, Brian's not here, dude. He's not here and something's wrong. And um, somebody ended up calling the hotel and yeah, they they found him dead. And, um, uh, you know, I always wondered if like, if Dustin and I would have let him ride with us and, you know, uplifted him in some way, would, would things have been different? And I know people that experience death like that often question themselves, but I, I still do. I still wonder because I'm one of those people where I love to lift Laud and love someone. And um, yeah, I just, I just would have never had him go to his hotel room distraught and, and that upset. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.